<laughs> the Wire, created by David Simon, is a HBO show which follows the drug trade of Baltimore from both the perspective of the drug dealers themselves and the police force looking to put the criminals behind bars. As the series progresses, each season looks to tackle different elements of the city's drug trade which assist in perpetrating it, from bureaucracies and administration, schooling and the educational system, and the media and sensationalism. With such a vast scope, no doubt this show contains numerous colourful characters, from Omar, Avon, Stringer Bell, Bubbles, Bodie, McNutty and much more. One particularly fascinating character who sticks out is Brother Mozon, a character introduced in Season 2 as a supporting character and who returns in Season 3, and today I wanted to talk a bit about him. Mozon, whose name comes from an Arabic word meaning balanced or weighted, which is fitting given his personality, is a hitman and hide enforcer from New York City. He comes with a heavy reputation, as obvious by the reactions of Stringer and Proposition Joe when it is revealed he is on his way to Baltimore. The way people talk about him, he may just as well be the most dangerous character in The Wire. I mean, he does carry a library card after all. Brother is an unorthodox and unusual character for The Wire, given he always wears a suit and bow tie and is very eloquent, well spoken and appears to be quite learned and educated, having both the street smarts and the book smarts, dedicating his spare time to reading magazines such as The Economist and The New Republic, though more often than not, not Harper's as his man Lamar always forgets to buy it. Muzon is hired by the incarcerated Avon Barksdale to protect the Barksdale territories from Proposition Joe's east side dealers. Little does he know that his number two Stringer Bell is working with Joe behind his back as part of a secret agreement where Stringer will get some of Prop Joe's good dope. Muzon arrives and shoots Joe's nephew Cheese with a snake shot and warns him that the next bullet in the chamber is lethal. That is pretty much all Muzon needs to do to get rid of his side and he spends much of his remaining limited screen time reading. Stringer dupes Omar into thinking Muzon tortured a boy who was close to his heart and Omar ambushes Muzon, shooting him. But after briefly speaking with brother, Omar comes to realise he was tricked. Muzon recovers in hospital and informs Stringer that their agreement has been absolved. In season 3, Muzon returns for revenge, tracking down Alma but rather than killing him, partnering up with him for some unmitigated badassery as the dynamic duo hunt Stringer Bell. Muzon corners Avon and threatens to disrupt or dissolve his New York Connect, threatening him with not death but losing the thing he loves the most, the game. And for his own reasons as much as Muzon's, Avon gives up Stringer, who is killed by both Lamar and Muzon, bringing an end to a storyline that started all the way back in season 1 with Stringer's pursuit of Omar and ending with him caught up in a web. Muzon is a weird character. As I mentioned in my review of the second season of The Wire, I wasn't the biggest fan of him. He comes off as cartoonish and feels like he's been dropped into The Wire from a different show. His mannerisms don't fit the gritty, real-world feel of The Wire, right down to the quip after scaring off Mr. Cheese or the dim-witted looking sidekick who carries his books. I could see him in a show like Breaking Bad or a Tarantino movie, but he doesn't quite match the tone of The Wire. One could argue that even characters like Omar are unrealistic, but we do know a lot about Omar, the nuances of his personality and character, what drives him, and we do see him fail at times. Muzon isn't in the show enough for us to get fully gripped with his character. He comes, he does his bit, and he leaves. He feels shallow and one note. But in this video, I wanted to pay him his dues because this mysterious individual has actually grown on me on recent rewatches. If anything, he has some great scenes like his cowboy style showdown with Omar in season 3, and his existence highlights many interesting things such as larger than life legendary characters existing outside of Baltimore, showing that the issues The Wire deals with are not specific to Baltimore and are instead universal. His proper way of dressing and his articulate nature may indicate that things are a little different in New York from the way they are in Baltimore, and it also shows the reach of Avon that he can hire someone like Mozone on retainer. 
but most of the characters of The Wire are composites of real-life individuals, and it's likely that his character is based on members of the Nation of Islam, a religious group founded in the 1930s with a heavy focus on African diaspora. Prominent individuals such as Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X were members of the nation before leaving and embracing orthodox Sunni Islam. The nation is considered one of, if not the, largest black nationalist group in America, and it has had its hand in confronting gang violence and drugs among African American communities. The nation has a security and disciplinary wing known as the Fruit of Islam, which has also been described in the past as its paramilitary wing. Members wear distinctive uniforms, and in the 1980s they created a separate security agency where they primarily patrolled public housing complexes in tough urban areas, including Baltimore. When you take information like this into account, and if you look up images of the Fruit of Islam, all of a sudden, Brother Muzon doesn't appear as comical as he first looked. And The Wire heavily implies Muzon is part of the nation or was part of it, with Chi suggesting it in his confrontation with Muzon, and also Muzon mouthing the phrase Allahu Akbar to himself after he is shot by Omar, an Arabic Islamic phrase meaning God is the greatest. The nation did much of their recruiting in prisons, and there is a scene where Lamar hands brother his gun, implying he does not carry it around with him. Why? Well, maybe he is a convict, which strengthens the idea that he is part of the NOI. Smart, well-read, and extremely violent NOI members are thought not to be uncommon at all. Muzon could also be part of other organisations such as the Black Philly Mafia. But if Muzon is part of the nation who try and get drugs and crime out of black neighbourhoods, what is Muzon doing being part of the game? Well, maybe library memberships are expensive these days, or he is a renegade NOI member who doesn't mind being hide muscle. There is a lot of mystery regarding his specific origins and motivations, and in my opinion, it actually adds to his character as something of a maverick individual of the wire. It is thought that over time, the Nation of Islam's popularity dwindled with numerous controversies such as their apparent involvement in the assassination of Malcolm X, and with NOI memberships decreasing, so did their funding, and thus they needed to let go of members of the fruit. Perhaps Muzon is one such individual, let go from the nation, wandering the streets like a ronin samurai until he found his skill set extremely useful in the underworld. And for someone with his experience and abilities, the streets of Baltimore are a walk in the park, so scenes like him sitting outside and reading are not as unrealistic as they first appear. Plus, his conversation with Avon shows he is heavily connected, so if anyone were to go after him, they may find an entire nation comes after them. Maybe Muzon felt the ways of the nation were failing. When he returns in season 3 and looks at the fallen towers, he quips reform and laughs to himself. It's the laugh of a man who recognises gentrification, who's seen all of this before and knows nothing will change and the war on drugs is never ending. So perhaps somewhere down the line he became jaded with the nation's efforts to end drugs and decided to just join the game and get his piece of the pie. Muzon, funnily enough, shares similarities with Omar, and not just because they are skilled with a gun, but Muzon also has a code, as suggested by the fact that the first question he asks after being shot is whether Omar killed his man. There's an integrity to him, a self-awareness. He doesn't even want to know why Omar wants him dead, just accepting it as part of the game. When he shoots cheese, he uses a non-lethal bullet, knowing that dropping bodies will only bring the cops, Instead, he sends a painful but non-lethal message, and his demeanour and dress, rather than be silly in the world of the wire, is actually an advantage. He can fly under the radar, as it is not immediately obvious he is what he is. Cheese thinks he's a joke, and he ends the conversation with blood splurting out of his arm. In Muzon's first scene, he nods to a passing cop, saying, Officer, the cop would never have thought twice that Muzon has more bodies on him than a Chinese cemetery. Interestingly, David Simon has commented on the real-life inspiration on Brother Muzon in a podcast, saying, And then Brother Muzon was based on a guy named Vernon Collins, who has a Muslim name. I think he joined the Nation of Islam when he was in prison and he embraced the identity, but I don't think he was actually active. 
But I think he had the vibe of being. I mean, I think he embraced. He went to the nation when he was in prison. I don't think he stayed with them in any really orthodox way. But he emerged on the streets as a presence with some sort of NOI vibe to him, even if it wasn't legitimate. You know, there's often been talks from fans of a prequel show of The Wire, perhaps showing Avon and Stringer rising up the ranks and taking the towers. Prequels are always difficult and risky things, and I'm not advocating for one at all for The Wire, but if there was a prequel show of The Wire or a spin-off, I actually think Brother Muzon would make a good protagonist. It reminds me of Better Call Saul, the prequel show of Breaking Bad, which followed the crooked lawyer Saul, also introduced in the second season of said show. Better Call Saul allowed for an expansion of the universe, adding to Breaking Bad while doing its own separate thing. If you had a show on Muzon, hypothetically you could explore a whole new world, the nation of Islam, the underworld of New York, the self-education of aspiring intelligent black individuals, the prison system, black nationalist movements, and in addition to all of this, you could also have the Wire characters drop in occasionally, perhaps for example, show how Avon got his connections with New York. So what do you think of Brother Muzon? Let me know in the comments below, and before we finish, I just want to thank my patrons, Andre Millington, Nicholas Curtis and Dirk K, and also my channel members, the new on Gorm 24, Rikers and Michael Awatwi. Thanks for watching.